Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant running on Synology in Docker. Today we are going to tackle Let's Encrypt and Duck DNS. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Today we will configure Let's Encrypt and Duck DNS for our Synology system. A lot of people when they say security, first thing that pops in the mind is installation or having some kind of SSL certificate. This is wrong. Before we start configuring Let's Encrypt and Duck DNS, let's first talk about warning. Implementing SSL certificate or installing SSL certificate for your Synology will not secure it. In effect, a lot of people will have less security after they install SSL certificate than they used to have before. And I know that it seems crazy, but the problem is that people believe that SSL certificate will solve all their problems with the exposure of the Home Assistant or Synology to the Internet. And that's wrong. The best and most secure system is a system that is not connected to the Internet. A lot of people that are using Home Assistant are using Home Assistant because they do not uh, trust or they do not want to expose their home to the Internet and allow other services on the Internet to manipulate their data. By implementing SSL, the only thing that you really do is you encrypt traffic between the system and the other system. So, for example, if you are exposing your Synology to the Internet, if you enable SSL encryption, you will be able to encrypt data between your Synology and your laptop or mobile phone. And what does encrypting traffic mean? It means that if there is a third party on the Internet that wants to snoop your Internet traffic or your packets, he will not be able to do it easily because all the packets, all the Internet traffic will be encrypted. But what that does also mean that, for example, if you have opened port 80 on your Synology, anybody accessing port 80 will be able to access it and will also be using SSL traffic. So using just SSL will definitely not secure your system. In effect, with some implementations, you will have bigger problem, as I said before, because now you will have open ports that you didn't have before. This is why you have to make some precautions. Let's talk about mandatory things that are some kind of a minimum for your system to be exposed in one way or the other to the Internet. In terms of Synology, what does this mean is you should go to your users and check what kind of users you have. First thing that you should definitely do is disable your guest account. Second thing that is recommended and most people do is create separate account that will be your user account and that user will be member of the admin group, meaning that user or yourself will be able to configure and manipulate configuration files of your Synology server. And third thing, after you have created your user and given it enough privileges is to disable the built-in admin account. Again, this is a recommendation both by Synology and by a lot of people on the internet. But on the other hand, even having one account and exposing it with admin privileges is a potential security risk. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now let's talk about Let's Encrypt and Duck DNS. So what comes first, chicken or the egg? In this case, it's a chicken. If you want to have Let's Encrypt certificate, you have to own a domain. There are two ways of owning a domain. One is to be really an owner of the domain. For example, you can go to some wholesale domain seller and buy your own name. And the next thing is to have domain that is some domain of something else. So this is where DuckDNS comes into play. DuckDNS is free dynamic DNS service. As a private user, you do not own your public IP address. Public IP address is something that is given to you by your internet service provider. And a lot of companies recycle your IP address, meaning that, for example, every 24 hours, it can be less, it can be more. This IP address gets changed and you receive new IP address. 
DNS service or domain name service is something that allows you to use known names or easier to remember names, for example, as beardedthinker.com, instead of using just IP addresses. Every domain name has IP address under it. I'm sorry if this is known to you, but I just want to make things clear why we are doing this. So, for example, you have your Synology server and you want to access your photo station, surveillance station or home assistant. First thing that you would have to do is go to DuckDNS, log in there and select a name that you want to use. In this test, I'll be creating a new DuckDNS name. So let's sign in with Google. As I'm already using DuckDNS, I have some domains here or one domain. And as you can see, we have here domain name that you will not be seeing, my current IP for that domain, my IPv6 dom uh, IP address if I'm using it and I'm not using it, and the last time it was updated. Also here, what you will see is your account. This is the email address that was pulled from the Google login, what type of account I have, my token, and when the token was generated. So let's create new DuckDNS domain. The process is same if you have one or you do not have any previous DuckDNS domain. Let's call it bearded URL and let's click add domain. And we now have a new domain added. It was added one second ago. Here is the current IP address. This IP address is pulled from the this IP address is pulled from the current public IP address I'm using to access the DuckDNS service. So if you are on the same location where your Synology is, this will be your current Synology IP address. And here we have a URL for the new subdomain. Okay. If we go back to Synology, you will see that there is something called external access. And here first option is DDNS, so dynamic DNS service. But if we add a new service provider, you will see that DuckDNS is not listed here. And on the other hand, DuckDNS is one of the most popular services for dynamic IP addresses. So is it possible to edit? Yes. But in order to do this, let's go back to DuckDNS. In DuckDNS, let's click install. And here you have all the possible configurations that are available out of box for DuckDNS. And one of them is Synology. Let's click on Synology. Let's select our URL and here, and here we have information on how to configure our Synology to work with the DuckDNS. What we have to do is we have to copy this string. Let's go back to Synology and in Synology, let's press customize. Let's type here DuckDNS and let's paste here the URL that we copied from the installation page. Let's save it. Next step is to configure our DDNS or dynamic DNS. In order to do that, let's press add. Let's select duck DNS. You will note the star here. I think the star or asterisk means that there is a customization on this service provider. We have to specify hostname. Hostname for me is bearded URL and now let's jump back to the DuckDNS to see what are the next steps for the configuration. What we have to do, we have to select DuckDNS, we have to type in our hostname, username, email should be none and we should also copy this key back to the home assistant. So we have DuckDNS selected, we have typed in our hostname 
username email will be none and we will paste here the key we copied from the duck dns page let's press ok and now we have a new dynamic dns entry it will take a couple of seconds to update and if everything is okay you will receive normal green status at this point your network can be let's say it accessed from the internet via this url so it will be bearded url.duckdns.org for me and your current external ip address is following one here you can see also when was the last time this ip address was configured first thing that we have to do for let's encrypt or for configuration of the let's encrypt is to open up some ports this is where we are compromising our network security as i've mentioned earlier every open port if you are not aware of what it is doing and for what purpose you're opening is potential security threat let's encrypt has a couple of ways it can verify your domain and issue a certificate but the most simple way for Synology is to open up two ports. One is port 80. This is used for HTTP traffic. And the other one is uh, port 443 used for HTTPS traffic. I will show you in this video what I do or what I need to do for this. But unfortunately, as there are many, many routers and many ISPs even disable parts of the functionality of the router, I may not be able to assist you in your own case so let's switch to my router okay this is the screen that i get when i log in to my router in order for you to configure port mapping or port forwarding or net in my case i have to go to advanced setup and i have to open net here is the list of all the servers or all the services i have on my own network uh, with the external ports and internal ports and of course the addresses where I'm forwarding this traffic in some cases I'm using net loopback and I'm using this because I'm also using my full qualified domain name as internal network uh, domain name so I have to loop some traffic back internally to, for DNS to work as I said, this is case that will work in my setup because my setup or my router has this type of configuration. Your router may have a different screen or different way to configure, but more or less everything should be the same. First thing I have to do is I have to delete current port forwardings for the port uh, 80 and for the port 443. And probably I should remember to get them back later on. And now I will be making port forwarding for those two ports to my Synology device. So let's encrypt can pull and verify my domain name. Let's add. Let's select custom service and I will call this HTTP. I will be using port forwarding for the address 192.168.1.201 as this is my Synology IP address. And next thing I have to do is I have to define external port 80 as start and end with the internal port 80. So this means that any traffic coming to my domain name or my public IP address on port 80 will be forwarded to the port 80 on this server IP address. Next thing that I can do here is probably something that I should do. So let's change this name from HTTP to let's encrypt okay and here i will also put port 443 and 443 i'm giving it one name called let's encrypt and meaning that all the traffic that is needed for this is going on a port 80 and port 443 okay okay let's press save so now i have added two new ports both services are called let's encrypt one is on port 80 the other one is on port 443 and they are forwarded to port 80 443 on the internal ip address of my synology this is the prerequisite because if we do not do that we will not be able to do any kind of certificate verification back in synology after configuration of our router we should go to security certificate add next get a certificate from let's encrypt next and here we have to enter our domain name so for me this will be bearded url
duckdns.org. Okay, I will be using my private email address and this field I will be leaving empty. But if, for example, you own your own domain name, such as example.com, you could also do subdomains here. So you could have disk.example.com, mail.example.com, homeassistant.example.com, and so on. Okay, let's press apply. And now we have a new certificate called beardedurl.dugdns.org. It is valid for the period of 3 months, 90 days. So I will be wrapping up this video at this point. Um, I hope you will not get any issue with that. If you do have some issues with the installation and you receive error from the Synology saying that you have to log back into DSM, make sure that you are running version 6.2.2-24922 update 3 or higher. Let's check the release notes for this version. As you can see in the version 6.2.2-24922-3 there was an update of the protocol of Let's Encrypt. As the previous version of the protocol was obsolete and it stopped working so you have to have at least this version to get certificate from Let's Encrypt. But as I said, this is it for today's video, as this was a bit longer process than I wanted and unfortunately it took me almost five days to record this because I had to do a lot of upgrades, then tweaking of my home assistant and things like that. So I will be releasing this video with the how-to for DuckDNS and Let's Encrypt. And in part 2 of this video, I will be covering how you can use this certificate that we just uh, created for either your Home Assistant or your HASIO uh, installation. So either use it in a Docker for Home Assistant Core or use it for the product previously known as HASIO, now Home Assistant, to uh, get secure connection. This is it for this episode of Home Assistant running on Synology. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord or you can leave a comment down in the comment section. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.